you, you see, it didn't take a trade for the Baltimore Ravens to get a Pro Bowl player because they already had one waiting in the wings. Today at practice, Marcus Williams, who has been missing for the past couple of weeks, he officially returned again because this, this all happened before. But he had missed some time before with his pec injury, came back a little bit later, then missed some time with his hamstring injury. But it was always a bittersweet thing because when we saw him out there, he was out there playing with basically one arm. Uh, so now hopefully that pec injury will be a lot better than it was before, but also that hamstring injury will be good. To, I mean, it has to be good to go for him to be practicing, especially with how the Baltimore Ravens get down. Now, this is great news. This is amazing news. Glad that Marcus Williams is back. It's a beautiful thing. I almost said Marcus Peters. I was probably thinking about that pick six the other night. But anyway, oh, poor guy, because he's in such a bad situation with that terrible organization the Raiders are. But anyway, Marcus Williams, um, this is tricky. Because, I mean, you, you know he was watching. And you know he was watching the, uh, the, the league leader in interceptions, Mr. Geno Stone. And they said through eight games, the last person who had five interceptions through the first eight games of the season was Ed Reed. And Geno Stone, hey! <laughs> that boy is balling, man. Shout out to Geno Stone, but... You know Marcus Williams been watching every single game. You know Marcus Williams been watching every single snap. You know Marcus Williams been thinking like, "Ooh." So now, and I want to hear from y'all for sure on this. Like, what do you think the Baltimore Ravens should do with their lineup? Do you leave Geno Stone where he's been at and you find a spot for Marcus Williams cuz you know that they love to have them three safeties on the field. Uh, Geno Stone, Marcus Williams, and Kyle Hamilton. And Kyle Hamilton does not normally typically play the, 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 the regular safety role. He's just, they use him everywhere. So what, what, what do you do? Do you give Marcus Williams his starting spot back? Do you say, all right, Marcus Williams, you're back in the starting lineup. Do you let the money make the decision for you? Because if, if you follow the money, then, yeah, Marcus Williams is just starter from jump. Or do you go with something, with trying to fix something that's not broken? Because Geno Stone, he certainly is not broken. This defense overall, I mean, last week they've been broken. But Geno Stone himself, him being the starting safety, hey, do, what do you do? What do you do? Well, I, well, I really look forward to hearing, seeing y'all in the comment section, and see what y'all are talking about. But um, it's a very, very tricky situation for those Baltimore Ravens. But we are glad that they're in this tricky situation. I, I like when stuff is made difficult like this because that means you have a lot of quality depth. So this is a great problem to have. Now, somebody else that they got back who is also a safety. I mean, he was a corner last year. Now this year's a safety. Who knows what he's going to be next year. But anyway, Daryl Worley. Um, Daryl Worley, he returned to practice. He got activated off of injury reserve. So he starts his three-week window, his 21-day window where he can practice. And within those 21 days, he has to be added to the active roster again. So, again, hey, Ravens, they, wow, they, they didn't make a move at the trade deadline. I know a lot of us were disappointed. But they getting a lot of guys back every week. Somebody returning. Like, a couple of last week, what, it was a doubt fair away. It was um, – Tylen Wallace off of injury reserve. Now this week, Marcus Williams and uh, now Daryl Worley off of injury reserve. So, hey, right, them, them Ravengers. Anyway, um, now with the good news also came a little bit of the bad. Uh, so people who did not practice, Gus Edwards, even though Gus Edwards, the, the FedEx round player of the week. So shout out to him. He, he said he, he going to play. Gus Edwards, he, he going to play. But anyway, he didn't practice today. Odell Beckham Jr., so there's that and and who knows what Odell Beckham Jr. could this be a vet rest day maybe is he still hurt I, I don't believe that he flew back with the team playing because remember when Marlon Humphrey was doing his IG live after the game we we're looking for Odell <laughs> we didn't see no Odell there but anyway um Ronnie Stanley hopefully a rest day maybe hopefully we'll see uh Morgan Moses a die fair way rock your scene so that that's a long list of people who did not practice that's a whole lot of people so hopefully uh, it is just a, um, whew, hopefully it's just a, some rest days for some of those guys. Um, now, Jeff Zrebic did highlight that uh, both Odell Beckham Jr., Morgan Moses, and Adolph Fairway, they all left Sunday's game at different points with injuries. And again, like I said with Odell Beckham Jr., that, that has been his thing this 
Every time he plays, he ends up leaving with an injury. Every game that he plays, he has left. And so, a lot of them he came back in, but at some point in time, he's left with injury. So he's just been hurting, man. He has really been hurting. But hopefully, he'll be good for the long haul, man. We, we really hope he'll be good for the long haul. Um, but, yeah, anyway, uh, Jeff Zrebic also talked about how uh, with John Harbaugh, um, as far as the trade deadline, nothing came to fruition, but Harbaugh highlighted how – they're not desperate right now. They weren't desperate for anything. And I know a lot of Ravens fans will not like hearing that. And I think that even if you're not desperate, hey, take advantage of your current situation. Make your great situation even greater. Make it even better. Make it even stronger. But the fact that they were not and are not desperate, um, been a good spot. Now, he is saying that after the fact. Now, if they would have made a trade, I wouldn't have considered them being desperate at all. But they were in a spot to where if they if nothing happened, then all right, cool. And, but at the same time, with Harbaugh saying that, I don't think he would come out and say, oh, man, this team, they did us dirty. They did us nasty. We had this in place. We were already set. And, oh, they okie doctors. I don't think he's going to say nothing like that. So, of course, he's going to be all, like, happy-go-lucky about it and whatnot. But behind closed doors, it's probably a whole other conversation. That Har that's Harbaugh's team keep it clean version of what he probably really uh, wanted to say. Um, he also talked about how uh, with the injuries that – he said there's nothing to report that's concerning about any players that missed practice today. So take your word for it, Hobbs, because remember last week when Roquan Smith, when he missed Wednesday practice, the way that Harbaugh said it, though, it, it, it's all about it's not even what you say, it's how you say it. Um, but when when Har when Roquan Smith missed last week's Wednesday practice, he was like, oh, you'll see when the injury report comes out there. Like, he just kind of like alluded to that and didn't really like let he's like let us know so, like the, hello that's Roquan Smith man that's Mr. T that's Mr. 100 million dollar so I, I think you I, I feel like we deserve to know not that we as fans are entitled to anything like that because I know we sitting all the way at the end of the bar don't think we forgot about that Mr. Jonathan Harbaugh but anyway um the fact that he said that though now he's hey nothing serious to report about. okay cool so I'm, if him if he's saying that now, I'm going to expect every last one of those guys who missed today's practice to be there tomorrow. Every last one. If it ain't serious, every single person. They better be out there in practice tomorrow, Jonathan. Or else, you know what I'm going to do? Probably nothing, but, yeah, but, you know, I just I just had to say that. But anyway, um, something about Roquan Smith that I appreciated. Um, about his game because you know Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith is like the nicest, meanest guy in the world. Um, because the way he talks, uh, his mannerisms and what super super nice. He says, tell super respectful. Um, but when he's on the field, man, he just he, he turns into a different animal. That man, Roquan Smith is nice, man. He he is nice. I remember when they first made the trade. I'm like, all right, Roquan Smith, known as one of the best linebackers in the league. But then when you get to see it every week, it's like, whoa, like hold up now. He is something serious, but he said that he actually connected with Bobby Wagner before he even got to the league to get, like, tips and tricks from him. And, of course, we, you know, we got the Seahawks coming up. Um, so, shout out to uh, Bobby Wagner. Now, with uh, Lamar Jackson, it's funny because Lamar Jackson, um, a reporter asked him about his record against the NFC. And Lamar Jackson was like, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to speak about it. I don't want to answer it. None of that. He tried to shut all of that down. He said, we're just trying to win every game. We don't care if it's AFC, NFC. We're just out there to play, trying to get the wins. That's it. That's it. You don't want to get caught up in all that stuff, all the, oh, well, this record and that. No, 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 no. He wants to win. And Roquan Smith said it too. He said the only stat that he cared about is winning and losing. Now, he did acknowledge that last week um, they sucked. Like, they didn't suck, but the, the, the defense was, they were slacking and they were slipping for sure. Um, but hopefully this week, ooh, this ooh, this is such a tough game against the Seahawks. Ooh, it's gonna be tough. Them corner, ooh, them corners better be ready because you got DK Metcalf, you got Tyler Lockett, you got Jackson Smith and the Jigba. Well, and especially him because he got all the confidence in the world right now after that catching that game winning touchdown um, the other day. And you know what I was thinking? Like, what makes it even better for him? I mean, either way, it would have been great because it's game winning touchdown. I remember when it flashed, like, when I got the notification, we saw it on, like, Twitter and stuff. Oh, Jackson Smith and Jigba caught a game winning touchdown. I was thinking, okay, Geno Smith, he threw it to the end zone or whatnot. And Jackson Smith and Jigba, he caught it. But then they showed the replay, they showed the highlight, and it was like a screen pass. It was a pass to the flash. He threw it to him, and he just, he got the yak. He got like 10 yards of yak and got in the end zone. So I'm like, okay, both are impressive. Because, again, especially that's, that's clutch mode. 
Um, but yeah, we don't want to see none of that on Sunday. So no, thank you. Now, um, back to Marcus Williams, uh, Mr. Tricky. Marcus Williams, uh, they asked uh, if he expects to play this Sunday. And Marcus Williams said, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, but he did say that he's feeling good and he's not frustrated by injuries and that he's faced adversity his whole life. Now, um, in my opinion, I mean, I don't even think this is just my opinion, but I think the injuries, it's a little more adversity than just injuries with Marcus Williams right now because I really do believe, like, this is an extremely tricky situation uh, with Geno Stone because, again, you do you like you you can't just take the league leader in interceptions off the field because your starter's back because Geno Stone has shown he's a starter too you can't just take him off the field and I feel like you can't reduce his snaps you just can't do that you you, you do not want to mess up his momentum you do not want to fix what's not broken so Hey, this is where I'm not envious of the Ravens coaching staff at all because it's their job to figure out how to make this thing work. Now, again, like I said earlier in this video, it is a great problem to have, but it is a problem. Not, not a bad problem. I mean, is there ever a good problem? But it is. It's, it's not a bad problem. But it's a problem. It's a tricky situation. And they really got to figure this thing out. But I just I feel like you you cannot take Geno Stone off the field. You cannot reduce his snaps. When Mar now, Marcus Williams is a baller, too, now. He is a baller too, but right now, right here, right now, you have to stick with the hot hand in my opinion. You have to leave Geno Stone out there. You cannot take him off. I think that Marcus Williams' snaps should be reduced. His role should be changed. His role should be altered, B but you, you cannot mess with Geno Stone right now because he's hot. He's hot. It just, in my opinion, it would not make sense if you took him off to put Marcus Williams, and I know Marcus Williams is the starter. I know Marcus Williams is making all the money in the world of safety right now for the Baltimore Ravens, but Ravens, you cannot mess this up. 